Hi, Cypher here, and welcome to another on-scale video tutorial. In this video tutorial, I will show you how to make this model parametric and how to use the cloud to simulate nine models at the same time and how to post-process all those results so you can get the different kind of impedance curves and you can compare very, uh, very simply your results. So I'm starting from this model that uh, I have already described in my previous videos. So if you didn't saw those videos, I'll put the link uh, either in the description of the video or uh, on the, the page in which this video is embedded. Uh, so just have a look at how to build this model, or you can also have a look at the full step-by-step -step tutorial. So this is a 2D axis symmetric multi-layer um, acoustic transducer. So here you have a PZT uh, disc, which is firing some acoustic waves in some water. And now in the current model, in the current model, the thickness of the PZT disc and the thickness of the epoxy are all fixed. So if I want to change that, I have to change the whole geometry and then launch again the model. Um, but there is a better way in all scale, which is to make all that parametric. And that's what I, I'm going to show you in this video. So once this is parametric, you can just launch a bunch of analysis on the cloud and calculate as many models as you feel are required at the same time. And you are able to spot very quickly uh, the kind of results that you would like to have. So let's see how to make that parametric. So the first thing to understand is that if you click on the primitives and you see that you have some ways to input the, the beginning and the end of uh, those primitives. You have another window called uh, parameter, parameter table, which will allow you to generate some variables. So let's let's give it a try. Let's make a variable called um, called end, or maybe uh, maybe let's call it pzt end like that. Um, and let's let's give it the same value then the the end of this pzt which is seven in millimeter now there is some uh, important thing to know here is that the value here is in meter units here you have it in millimeter here it should be in meter so the value to be inputted here is 0 0.007 it's not seven and just add that click on the plus once this variable is added what you can do is to double click on the X here and you'll have a small window uh, asking you use parameter for property. So click on that and now you're able to choose one of the property you just defined in this parameter table. So I'm choosing this one and here nothing changed, but now this uh, variable has been parametrically set. So if I change this value here directly in this window, I put it nine, for example, I can see that the value of my PZT will change accordingly. So pretty cool, right? So I'm still, uh, I still have a few things to do to make this whole thing parametric because you see that if I increase that to nine, well, the, the PZT material just starts to cover up my uh, epoxy on the top. So of course I don't want that. So I'll have to set some variables so that basically uh, this doesn't happen. And when I change the thickness of the, of the PZT, my uh, hard epoxy at the top will also move uh, at the same time. So the way to do that is to create, uh, to create several variables. So I'll create what I'll do as first, uh, let's remove this parameter um, and let's let's just delete this one. Let's start from uh, let's start to, let's start again. So I'll create a parameter for um, for the thickness of this PZT disk. 
So let's create one variable for the thickness of the PZT called PZT THK, like thickness. And the, th the initial thickness will be 0 0.002, two millimeters, so the same than what I have now. And I will check the varying parameter. So the varying parameter will allow me to, to calculate um, parametrically a bunch of those uh, parameters when I launch that on the cloud later on. Click on plus, and now I'll create another one called PZT end. And um, okay, I, I need also, yeah, PZT end, right? This one will not vary, so I'm unchecking that. And this one will be equal to uh, the beginning value, which was 0 0.005 plus, so there should be some space in between, plus um, this PZT thickness variable that I just created. So there is an equal, and this will be automatically calculated. So just adding that. Um, so when this is added, let's make all that parametric. So I only change the, um, this one, and I will use PZT end. Let's see if it works. Let's change this value to three, and you see my model updates, so it works. Wonderful. But I still this one still doesn't follow. So the only thing I have to do is to do exactly the same for the for the other material here. So I create so the I create another variable which will be hard uh, thick. This will be a varying variable as well. The initial value will be 0 0.000634, which is the initial the, the current value. Adding that. And I'll create another another one, hard end. This will not vary. And this will be equal to hard THK plus um, plus PZT end. So now you see that there is an equation which links the end of that to the thickness. So I'm just adding it. Now let's see what happens. If I change that to three, okay, it still doesn't, still doesn't work. Maybe that's because I didn't leave it any that. Let's try again. Oh, yeah, I'm stupid. Uh, yeah, I added those variables, but I didn't add them here into the primitive. So of course, it doesn't change yet. So I have to go here to this primitive. And um, basically, here, I will make this one equal to hard end. And this one here, will be equal to PZT end. Right. So now, now it should be working, right? Yes, now it works. So there's um, there's one thing to be careful about in this model. If you remember how I created this model and, and the tutorial that I did before, you see that there is an output, which is the extrapolation output. So which allows me to calculate uh, radial beam out of this transducer, and here you have a you have a cut line which basically uh, at which the um, this extrapolation da data are calculated. So um, you will have some problem with the simulation if this line started to go into the PZT. So basically, if if you increase too much your PZT thickness, I don't know, you six like that and this output line start to go here, then you'll, you'll start to have some problems and it will not compute. So, so your simulation will fail because this line cannot be, cannot go inside the PZT. Um, so there is some limitation. So um, let's say the maximum, the maximum uh, PZT thickness I, I will define will be 0 0.0025, so, equivalent of this, 
and the maximum let's say hard will be like this so i think it will not go over this line so should be should be okay okay so my model is now parametric so what i'll do is that i will just run that on the cloud so let's save my model run on the cloud so here uh, i have a, a message called model extends warning primitive geometry has been defined using parameters but the grid extends have not so it's actually an important message uh, and what it means is that there is a grid which is defined here by certain extents so there is a maximum value of the grid minimum value of the grid and let's us the grid is not set as parametric in my current model so in in the case where you know this would become so big that my model will go out of the grid then of course I would have some problems and I would need to increase the size of the grid as well. So in this case, this will not happen. So it's not a problem, but just in case you would like to see how to change the extent of the grid, there is a function called extents here, mesh extents, and which you can um, here, you can change the extents of the grid. If you want the grid, which is bigger, just go here. And, and this can also be set parametrically if you need. Okay, so now let's run on the cloud. Uh, okay, yes. And now you see that there is a small difference with what I did before. Now I have two variables which start to appear here, which are uh, the variable that I set as varying. So the thickness of my hard material and the thickness of my PZT. So I am now able to calculate a lot of simulation at the same time. How do I do that? First, let's suppose that I want to calculate several thicknesses for the PZT. So from going from two millimeter to 2.5 millimeter, and I want to do three simulations in between. So there will be an increment of 0 0.25 millimeter. And for the hard, I will go from this value to uh, 0 0.8 millimeter, and I also do three simulations. So here, a total number of nine simulation will be launched on the cloud at the same time. So I can choose a number of CPU here. Let's, I can just use two CPU as well. Let's use four. Uh, let's estimate that. And let's run that on the cloud. So clicking on run. And now you'll see what will happen is that those nine simulation will all be uh, calculated at, at the same time on the cloud. Right, so now, well, it's actually going pretty fast. Um, already a bunch of them are finished. Okay, and now I actually I already calculated all of that. So as you see, it's going very fast. So, and it just calculated all those iteration, uh, different kind of designs. So now I'm just downloading all of that. So depending on the types of output you set up, Generally, if you do that uh, and you don't need uh, extrapolation, well, it's better just to remove it. Otherwise, you know, you will download data that you don't need. Let's just wait and come back when it's finished.
Okay, now everything is downloaded, so I'm ready to show you the results. And before I go to the post processor, have a look at how the parameters are calculated, because this is, this is quite important. What you see is that if you have two variables like that, the first variable is set to constant, so to the first uh, value, and then the second variable uh, is moved through from the first value to the third va to the second and the third, and then the the first variable start to change again, and then it goes like that. So there is some kind of two loops which are calculated together. So we'll use that later on in another video to show you how to to put all that in a script to calculate uh, the to post process the results automatically. So this will be the next video. But anyway, uh, now now notice that. Uh, let's go to the post processor. Let's have a look at what I calculated. So all my results are in this folder, and you see that I have the result from the, my first analysis to my analysis number nine. Let's look at analysis number one first. Uh, let's look at my uh, history curves. And for example, the charge, okay? And let's suppose that I want to see the impedance, okay? And okay, let's let's change the configuration of the viewport to show up like that four views. So here in this window here, let's have a look at what at the impedance. So it's something like that. And now let's have a look at another result, which would be I don't know. Let's look at number four. Number four which is the second iteration of the PZT, um, that. So let's look at the same curve, the charge. So you see this slight difference here and here. And actually you can, you can view also on the same. If you click on that, you'll be able to view the difference between those two, which is, uh, which is nice. Actually, that's what I should do. Um, okay, and let's look at the impedance for this impedance so when when you want to look the impedance you have to uncheck the logarithm first um, then you add both curves and then you can check again the logarithm and you see there is some difference in between um, in between those two simulations so now you are viewing uh, the influence of the difference in pzt thickness on uh, the impedance curve. So you see that this one has a slight, slightly higher uh, peak here, and uh, the frequency of resonance has slightly shifted. So um, it's cool. Now I have nine results. I can look at all those nine results like that. Um, or there is a second way. So in on scale, you can either look at graphically in the post processor like this, or you can uh, post-process all of that automatically using scripts. And the name of the script engine behind uh, the post-processor is called Review. So I will use Review in another video to show you how to create a script that will allow you to read all those results sequentially and to generate automatically um, the, these kind of curves without having to do all the clicking all the time. So you just have to, to generate once the script and then you are, uh, you are set up for life. Uh, so I hope it will be useful. Uh, so I'll show you that in another video. Keep watching.